Hello my friends, welcome back to What The K, where we test out Korean beauty products to decide whether they are worth your time and money. Today we're gonna be discussing the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. Looking forward to telling you all about it. So we're gonna go in a little bit different of an order today. Today is Mother's Day in real time. Just spent a bunch of time with the fam. We went to a place called Zava Zone for a few hours, went out to a really late lunch, and now it is time to get back to business. I realized as we're coming home from our late lunch that I probably should have put this on this morning, but I got kind of lost in the French toast my husband made me and it made me a little bit funny in the head. I don't know, I guess I was just really, really happy. So I forgot to put this on this morning. So now it is late. Later in the day, it is after five o'clock, I think. It's really late, I don't have my um, my phone on me. Oh, I guess I should probably know what time it is, huh? Yikes. Lila, what time is it? My daughter just informed me that it's 5.38, so it's very late, but I did want to try this on and do a little bit of a wear test, at least for you. I do have to edit this video tonight, so I can't wear it all that long, but at least I can give a little bit of an impression. If this video didn't have to go up tomorrow, then I would wait and do it another week, but you know, I'm just gonna go with what I have. So the other thing is, is I haven't done an ingredient analysis on this yet, so I figured what we would do, we'd go out a little out of order and we would do the application first. I'll go do the ingredient analysis. I'll wear it for a little while and then I'll come back, give you the information and we'll talk a little bit about this short amount of wear time. I was wearing makeup earlier, so that's why my eyes are done. This is the Chrysana Ann Cosmetics Olympus palette that they just sent me that I'm really excited about. It's an indie brand. Uh, so I did, I'm did. i still, I'm testing this today, so I didn't want to take it off. So what I did was I cleansed my face with a cleansing balm and then I wiped it off with a wet washcloth and then I put on a light moisturizer. I'm not gonna do any primer. Uh, I don't usually wear primers underneath BB creams and I don't find with my normal skin that I need a primer in order for a foundation to function like people with oily skin may. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it. I, I'm a little bit nervous about applying this before I do ingredient analysis but you know you do what you gotta do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply this to my hand. This is the shade light beige. It's like a light neutral kind of shade a little bit on the grayer side so I'm curious to see how this is gonna go on. I'm gonna use this foundation brush on one side. This is a round kabuki brush by Beauty Junkies. And then we're gonna use the Beauty Junkies sponge. I just, this happens to be clean and this happens to be semi-clean. So I wanted to use a clean product. Make sure no other products interfered. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the brush side first. So I just did one pump on my hands and I'm gonna put that on my face. I'm gonna do one pump on each side and see how that goes. It's a little bit light for my skin tone, but it's not bad. I'm gonna purposely cover it over my lips because I want you to see the coverage over my lip color. Now, I do know that this is supposed to be a more full coverage BB cream. I definitely don't see full coverage on this so far. I see more of a light to medium coverage, but this is just one pump on one side with a brush. So let's go ahead and let's do one pump on the other side with the sponge. I like the shape of a sponge because I feel like it does like the rolling thing really well. So far not seeing too much difference as far as the application. Maybe a little bit more coverage with the sponge which is odd because usually I feel like I get a little bit more coverage with a brush than I do with a sponge but I don't know. Just a tad bit more coverage with the sponge. So we're looking at definitely a lighter to medium coverage here. Ooh, I need to get my eyebrows done real bad. Real bird, I gotta make that appointment this week. Let's go ahead and see if it can build. We're gonna do another pump on each side. It's definitely building. And it looks really pretty right now. I really like the finish on it. It's uh, more dewy than matte. I feel like the coverage built up just a little bit. Let's go ahead and finish up the other side with the sponge. This is extremely dewy. Uh, I feel like I definitely need some kind of setting powder with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Rimmel Stay Matte and I'll be right back. I'm finding recently I have a preference for using a more dense brush for putting on powder. I just feel like it 
pushes it into the skin better. Um, so I'm gonna use this, this is by Skin Iceland. I know it's not super fluffy, but I don't really want a fluffy brush. I wanna really press the powder into the skin because it's so dewy. And of course, this could interfere with the performance of the BB cream. Ooh, I'm shedding, ooh, the brush is shedding like crazy. Using a powder, uh, depending on the powder you use, will definitely impact the performance of it. Right now, I feel like my face is mattified. This is a fantastic face powder if you've never tried the Rimmel Stay Matte. It's amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna put on any blush or other cheek product, but I'm gonna go ahead and put on some lips. Right, this is Ooh La La by Julep. It's one of their liquid lipsticks. I really like Julep's liquid lipstick formula. It's very creamy. This formula reminds me a lot of the um, the Bare Minerals formula. It's very whippy and smells good and feels good. It's very comfortable. At this point, I am going to go about the rest of my day. I'm just staying in the house. I'll do ingredient analysis and I'll tell you more about all of that when we get back for the final review. So I'll see you in about four hours or so, which will, for you will be like a couple seconds. So see you in a second. So it's been about four hours since I put on this BB cream and I'm gonna have to get into the editing phase very soon so I will put any notes about continued wear if I notice anything through the rest of the night I'll put in the description box below uh, but so far so good still looking pretty much exactly the same as it was when I put it on maybe just a tad bit better on the brush side but I also have to take into account that I have more freckles on this side than I do on this side but we're definitely looking at a medium coverage here not a full coverage foundation um, eyeshadow is looking good though good job Chrisanna Ann um, it's kind of breaking up a tiny bit around my nose, but it's not too terrible. Yeah, it's definitely breaking up a bit. Chin's looking good, uh, but overall still looking very good. So for that, that is wonderful. But I do have the other details that I researched during the last few hours about this BB cream that I wanted to let you know about. So the first thing is the price of it. I did pay $11.98 on Amazon straight from Misha, but you can also get it at Target.com and you can get it on the Misha website. It's $22 there. So I definitely recommend getting it from Amazon if you're planning on getting it. It is a 50 milliliter tube or 1.69 ounces. I'm telling you, this does not feel like it's a full ounce of product. Uh, I did read another review where they were talking about that it wasn't a full ounce of product. So I don't really know what's going on there. Like this, I can pinch all the way through and it just doesn't seem like a full ounce, but it could just be the packaging is just dece deceiving in one way or another. I mean, this is pretty thick and full over at the base, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it. I do like the pump uh, format of it. That is really, really nice. And I like that it's a tube with a pump because then you can kind of squeeze out the product into the pump, which is good. For the recommendations for this from Misha, it says it's for those that are looking to hide blemishes and other imperfections, those who want a high coverage but a lightweight formula, and those looking for a makeup product that provides wrinkle care and UVA, UVB protection while brightening skin, and also for those looking for a quick and easy way to achieve a more perfect complexion. So before we go through the claims, I do want to mention that it is in six shades, which is a lot for a Korean BB cream, but it doesn't get that deep. It goes from bright beige to golden beige, so probably like a medium-ish skin tone maybe not even fully medium skin tone. They all look relatively light. I do feel like this one, number 21 light beige, was pretty good for me. It was a little bit gray though. Like the tone is definitely not perfect, but it's close enough. So let's talk about the claims. It's talking about hiding blemishes and other imperfections. I don't feel like it does that. I think that that's a fail on that. I don't... It's not enough coverage for that. Those who want high coverage but a lightweight formula, high coverage, no. Lightweight formula, absolutely. Uh, those looking for makeup product that provides wrinkle care, UVA, UVB protection while brightening skin. So that's gonna get into the ingredients. So I spent a good solid hour and a half to two hours looking up the ingredients for this because there's a lot of ingredients. So what I learned was some good news. It is water-based. So if you like water-based BB creams and foundations, this is definitely gonna be for you. Glycerin is relatively high up on the list, which is a nice skincare uh, hydrating ingredient. Then low, way lower down on the list, we have rosehip oil, oil jojoba oilers, oils, can I speak? It's getting late. Squalene, 
uh, hydrolyzed collagen, macadamia seed oil, uh, adenosine, sodium hyaluronate, ceramide 3. Okay, the bad news is, is that glycerin is the only one that seems to be higher up on the list. And one thing that I was very kindly reminded of by a commenter on my last What the K is the 1% rule. So I, I I know it in my head, but I and I've mentioned in videos before, but I don't mention it in every single video, and I probably should start. The 1% rule is that in the United States, in cosmetics, anywhere from 1% to 0.0000001% of the product is in here. You can put them in any order. They do say you're supposed to list the pigments last. At least with this one, they all list them way down below. It's actually below the pigments. So I don't know. They can list them in any order they want. So there's a chance that all of those good ingredients that there's a very, very small amount in this, but you, there's no way to know how much is in here there's just there's no way to know so that's not as good so the skincare benefits in here may not be as good it is not vegan there's beeswax and caviar extract also the squalene we don't know the source it could be shark liver oil it could be plant-based we don't know there is the environmental concern of cyclomethicone which is another name for cyclopentasiloxane it is perfectly fine for you but it is bad for the environment <laughs> last time we talked about this i talked about i thought i was so smart that i I was gonna w wipe off the cyclopentyl siloxane with my towel and I wasn't gonna wash it down the sink but then when you wash the towel where do you think it all goes it goes right down the drain Jen duh so I have a modified version of that what we're gonna do now is we're going to use an oil based makeup remover and then we are going to wipe it off with thick cotton pads or a shop towel that can be thrown away after multiple uses I haven't bought any shop towels so I'm probably just going to use use my Shiseido facial cottons, which are amazing. If you can ever get those at the VIB sale, they're like nine bucks for a pack of facial cottons, which is insane for a pack of facial cottons, but it's not that expensive in the grand scheme of things. But um, I always stock up at the sales, but they're amazing. They're like super thick, really easy to use. So I'll probably use those to just kind of wipe away with an oil-based makeup remover and then wash my face off so that a lot of it gets thrown into the trash. So that's the new plan for cyclopentasiloxane. Because Along with that, we do have the sunscreen. Now this does have sunscreen in it. This has um, SPF 42 PA++. Now the one of the big sunscreens in this is something called ethahexyl methoxycinamate. There's a lot of mixed information about that on the internet. So some people are saying it's perfectly fine. Polish Choice says that it's perfectly fine. But I did find some sources that say that it is an endocrine disruptor. But Polish Choice says that it's fine and it's approved in cosmetics worldwide. So I'm just presenting that to you as information uh, so you can decide whether it's something you want to use or not. I personally am a little creeped out by it. It also has methyl and propyl parabens in it. There is an irritation concern for a few ingredients, talc, propylene glycol, and polyethylene. Uh, polyethylene, you are not supposed to put polyethylene on irritated or broken skin. So if for some reason, you know, you had a blemish and you popped it, you do not want to put this over top of it. Really, really not good. And there's also a cocktail of fragrances in here. Speaking of that, let me tell you, I never told you how it smelled. Let me smell it. It didn't really smell it when I was putting it on slightly lotiony floral scent. So if you don't like scents, if you're sensitive to them, you probably don't want to get this as well. <sighs> so overall, this is the thing. I really like the performance of it so far. I think the performance is good. It's a nice medium coverage. I like the way it feels. It's extremely lightweight. That lightweight thing is so, so true. And I think that's due to it being water-based and not silicone-based, which I think is awesome. I'm not impressed with the ingredients at all with it. Uh, that's what's killing me on it is I'm not impressed with the ingredients. I wish that there was a way to know how much sodium hyaluronate there was in here and how much of the you know ceramide 3 and the hydrolyzed collagen I wish that I knew how much was in here but because it's so low down I have a feeling that it's probably not a lot which bums me out uh, so and then the whole thing with the ethahexyl methoxycinamate thing freaks me out too so I don't know if you know anything about that ingredient by the way I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below what you think about that that's how I feel about it it's up to you what you think about it based on what I've presented to you I hope I've given you enough information so that you can decide whether you want to purchase this or not uh, next week on what the K we're gonna be trying the skin food strawberry food therapy sugar face scrub and and I will tell you, this smells just like strawberry jam. It looks like strawberry jam and I wanna eat it, but I'm not going to. 
I'm not gonna spread it on my toast. I'm gonna save it for next week. So I wanna thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you wanna see more What The K, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next Monday's episode. Mad love and I will see you in a video soon. Bye.